everyone. This is Caitlin Leopold, your Anytime Fitness Registered Dietitian. And today we will be continuing our webinar series by talking about alcohol and water. So we'll discuss a little bit further um, its kind of effects on the body as well as kind of amounts for both of these things that we do need to kind of aim for here. So what exactly is alcohol? So scientifically speaking, um, ethyl alcohol or ethanol is, is an intoxicating ingredient found in beer, wine, um, even liquor. Um, and it actually is produced by the fermentation of yeast, sugars, and starches. And of course, depending on the type of alcohol, that kind of depends on how it's how it's made and what percentage of these things are used. Um, alcohol does affect every organ in the body, but it is specifically a central nervous system depressant that is rapidly absorbed from the stomach and small intestine um, into the bloodstream. So what I mean by it being a central nervous system depressant is that it actually kind of slows down the messages between the brain and the body. So as we all kind of know, it does, it does slow down some of those um, reactions that are involved with that as well. So it is classified technically as a sedative hypnotic drug. So what do I mean by that? At high doses, it actually acts again to that depressed that central nervous system. But at lower doses, um, it actually can be technically a stimulant, right? It induces some of those feelings of euphoria um, and talkativeness there. So what is a standard drink? So scientifically speaking, a standard drink is equal to 14 grams. So this is about 0 0.6 ounces of pure alcohol. So this is generally, um, pure alcohol is found in all of these things. So typically, if you've ever kind of wondered, you know, why is only one serving of table wine five ounces? versus, you know, a beer is 12 ounces. It all kind of depends on kind of this alcohol by volume and it all depends on this 0 0.6 ounces of that pure alcohol. So one standard drink is 12 ounces of beer, which is that 5% um, alcohol content. So that's that alcohol by volume. So that's the measure of how much alcohol is contained in a given, a given volume of that alcoholic beverages. Um, so as I, as, as kind of seen, as I mentioned, if you've had, if you have 12% of table wine, you're definitely getting more alcohol versus your 12 ounces of beer. So that's kind of what that percentage alcohol content means. So you're getting a little bit more um, for the same amount of um, alcohol there. So one standard drink is that 12 ounces of beer, um, eight ounces of malt liquor, um, which is that 7% alcohol content five ounces of wine, which is 12% alcohol content, and 1.5 ounces or, um, or a shot of 80 proof um, distilled spirits or liquor. So that's your gin, rum, vodka, whiskey, those types of things there. So as you can see, by the higher percentage of alcohol that is in it, you're definitely going to be consuming a lower amount of alcohol there just because the alcohol content is higher, if that makes sense. So the alcohol by volume, the higher that is, that's why you're consuming a little bit um, less to equal a standard drink to kind of get the same amount of alcohol for each. That's what that's kind of um, meaning there. So when it comes to, you know, alcohol metabolism, what happens in our body? So once digested, our body actually makes its main priority um, to metabolize alcohol above all things. So it actually does. It halts metabolism of everything else to actually get to get that alcohol out. So our body actually kind of reads alcohol as a poison. So as I said, its main goal is um, to actually get rid of it. So excessive intake will actually cause the liver, again, to stop metabolizing fat and carbs for fuel in order to first get this alcohol metabolized. So in excess, the fat metabolism stops. And over time, this is actually what leads to fatty liver. So the fat also leads to a buildup of fatty acids, which then form triglycerides. So if you've ever kind of maybe heard me say, um, a high amount of alcohol can actually incre increase 
our triglyceride level in, in the blood, which is actually our, our kind of like our blood fat in a sense. So heavy alcohol consumption can actually cause many nutritional deficiencies, especially in high amounts. Um, it can alter our, di our digestion, our absorption, um, and a metabolism of nutrients. It can even cause muscle damage, muscle wasting, muscle weakness, as well as impaired ability to gain muscle mass and strength. So it actually does inhibit the absorption of usage of our vital nutrients, such as thiamine, which is actually important for our carbohydrate metabolism. Our B12, vitamin B12, is actually for, there for our healthy red blood cells. Um, and folic acid, which is definitely important for our nerve cells, and zinc, which can affect our endurance, um, especially when we consume high amounts of alcohol. So the biggest thing with alcohol metabolism, kind of how long it takes, um, it does depend on the person, but definitely in high amounts, our liver can only metabolize a certain amount of alcohol per hour, regardless of the amount in the bloodstream. So um, the rate of alcohol metabolism actually depends on several different factors. So it does um, include the amount of metabolism enzymes in our liver. And again, this can vary greatly between individuals and specifically to um, size does play a factor. So in general, after one standard drink, the amount of alcohol in the drinker's blood peaks about 30 to 45 minutes. So of course, the more amount of alcohol you're drinking in a small amount of time, it's gonna be definitely harder for your body to kind of break that down. Um, and definitely those effects happen, again, when alcohol is definitely consumed in excess. So even after a person stops drinking, that alcohol in the stomach and small intestine continue to enter the bloodstream and circulate throughout the blood. So um, in general, that's why I typically advocate if you do choose to indulge in, in alcohol, just take your time and maybe drink water in between to kind of give your liver the proper, proper time to metabolize it, metabolize it. So how long does it necessarily stay in the system? Again, it varies a little bit per person, but um, in general, um, it stays in the bloodstream um, up to six hours. Um, it can stay actually in our breath, um, saliva, and urine anywhere from 12 to 24 hours, of course, depending on the amounts as well. So the morning after, or what we kind of know as, you know, the hangover. So these are some common, you know, symptoms that we may experience um, after, and I'm going to talk a little bit about a little bit why. So the first one being headache and dry mouth. So maybe we drank a little bit too much last night um, and we wake up definitely with a headache. So alcohol again can actually cause dehydration and both of these things um, lead to both headache um, as well as dry mouth. So that's a one other reason why I typically always advocate drinking water in between as well. Um, stomach pain or vomiting. So alcohol directly irritates the stomach as well as the intestine, which may cause um, stomach pain and even vomiting as well. So continuing with that, sweating, vomiting, or even diarrhea, um, as well as kind of the, de the dehydration that I mentioned with the first one, um, it actually can be caused in our body too, a fluid loss, um, an electrolyte imbalance, which all of those things together can cause that sweating, vomiting, or even diarrhea. Um, and sleep disruption. So it may even interfere with our dream state um, and contribute to fatigue as well. So general, generally these symptoms occur widely due to inflammation in our body. So what inflammation actually is, is in, inflammation is the body's kind of immune system's response to an irritant. So what I usually say about alcohol is, right, my body knows what to do with carbohydrates. My body knows what to do with fats and protein, but my body doesn't know what to do with alcohol. Alcohol is something foreign to our body and our body just wants to get rid of it. So essentially that's what, that's what inflammation is. It's kind of a foreign thing in our body and our body's responding to it in this type of way. So that's why a lot of these symptoms um, actually occur. So recent research actually suggests that alcohol causes inflammation in the intestine and can actually impair the body's ability to regulate that inflammation and even our immune system. So over time, and again, in the large amounts, it can definitely affect further kind of things going on, going on with our body. So long-term health risk of excessive alcohol. So I know I kind of talked about 
you know, the symptoms of short-term use or the night, the day after, but these are com com some common long-term risk of excessive alcohol. So over time, that excessive alcohol all use can lead to the development of chronic diseases and other serious problems, including high blood pressure, heart disease, stroke, liver disease, and digestive problems. Um, it can maybe possibly lead to cancer um, of the breast, mouth, throat, esophagus, liver, or even our colon. As I mentioned, it can weaken our immune system, thus in turn increasing the chances of getting sick. It can definitely affect our learning and memory problems, including even dementia and poor school performance. Um, it can cause mental health problems, including depression and even anxiety. It can cause social problems, including lost productivity, family problems, or even unemployment. And it can definitely lead to alcohol dependence or alcoholism. So the, definitely the number of drinks consumed increases your risk for these chronic outcomes. And it can, again, the, the days that you do too as well. So with us being in a gym, um, I did want to talk about alcohol and kind of muscle growth here. So as you can see, well, to be honest, it actually may have an impact. So alcohol, again, actually provides us with calories, but little to no nutrients. Um, and there's actually more and more studies um, that have come out to show that it can definitely affect it. Uh, many studies have found that alcohol may impair the response of muscle protein synthesis and exercise recovery um, in human skeletal muscle, despite optimal nutrient provision. So in healthier, I mean, in, in kind of easy terms to say, um, it can affect the way we absorb some nutrients as well as absorbing that protein for optimal um, muscle growth, okay? So again, I did note that this study was was based on amounts reported um, during a binge drinking by athletes uh, there. But um, alcohol intake has been shown to impair, <clears throat> excuse me, the rates of muscle protein synthesis after exercise. So these, these effects were mostly because of the indirect effects of alcohol consumptions. Um, and also with this too, the athletes were not properly um, taking in optimal carbohydrates for optimal recovery because again, they were kind of getting it from alcohol versus, you know, properly refueling themselves after exercise. So that could have been an effect as well. Um, it reduced muscle protein synthesis following about a concurrent exercise. So actually this, um, the amount of protein ingested with the alcohol was actually proper amounts. Um, but it has been shown that it can actually suppress our response um, in muscle. So it, it typically impaired more recovery and adaption to training. So it may have a negative effect on performance there. And it has been, again, shown to affect our sleep quality. And we all know that to properly recover uh, and build that muscle, we do need proper, proper sleep as well. So typically, um, the morning after on this study, um, they weren't able to properly um, recover and, and, and have proper um, power output the morning after a drinking session versus when they didn't drink. Um, so it, it did definitely affect a lot of other things as well. Um, and with that being said too, higher amounts of alcohol um, may also affect testosterone and estrogen levels in both men and women, and it does play a part in muscle production. So testosterone plays a major, major part in, in the development of lean muscle tissue. So when we drink higher amounts of alcohol, it can actually increase our estrogen levels, especially too in men. So with that being said, um, if we're producing more estrogen, we're typically not producing as much testosterone. And with both of those things combined, um, that I just mentioned with the lower levels of testosterone being produced, we're just not, um, building the proper amount of, of muscle that we could if we didn't drink heavy amounts. And again, this, with all of these effects that I'm typically talking about, I'm talking about higher amounts of alcohol. So I'm talking about one, I'm talking about more than one standard drink in an hour, right? We're talking about kind of, I'm a binge drinking, drinking episode, so drinking higher amounts um, and a little amounts of time. So dietary guidelines for alcohol. So how much um, should we have? So me personally, I think this is a little bit 
a little bit high, um, but um, again, this is what the 2015-2020 U.S. Dietary Guidelines for Americans kind of recommended um, that if this alcohol is consumed, um, as always, I always say it should be consumed in moderation, but those of legal drinking age, typically one, what this is is up to one drink per day for women and up to two, two drinks per day for men. Those are kind of healthier um, levels. But what I typically say, um, if your goal is to lose weight um, and get optimal muscle growth, um, it would be best to limit alcohol consumption as much as possible as it does, again, provide us with empty calories, um, especially if we aren't cautious with that overall amount. So typically, um, that's my biggest advice is kind of just watching the amounts and kind of what you're pairing it to. So I usually kind of say definitely drink in moderation if you do choose to drink, um, limiting to about one drink per hour to give your body proper time to metabolize and definitely hydrating in between drinks um, if you do choose to drink a little bit more. And if you do have any more questions about alcohol, please reach out to me. I know this was kind of just a brief, quick overview, um, but I did just want to touch base on it and definitely know that especially if your goal is, you know, muscle growth and weight loss, it does play effect um, in both of those things. So just something to be aware of there. So next, I did want to take the time to discuss water. So water is essential for us to survive. So that's why I definitely wanted to touch, touch base on it. So humans have um, no capacity to actually store spare water. So we must quickly replace any that is lost. Um, so believe it or not, we can only actually live a few days without water. So water does make up between 45 and 75 percent of a person's weight um, and fluid can be lost from the body via urine, skin, feces, and lungs. So the way to kind of think about water is, um, in a sense, it's a highway that kind of moves a lot of nutrients and waste between our cells and organs. So we need water to kind of carry out essential functions of the body, and that's why we can't necessarily go very long without it. <clears throat> so if you're kind of listening to me right now, and you're like, hey, and I barely drink water, we do get water some, from um, some of our foods as well, but it still is very important to incorporate water um, into your daily beverage intake. So what does water do for you? I'm going to touch base on a few of these things, but as I said, it's very important to consume proper amounts of water because it does um, affect a lot of other things in our body. So it is essential for um, digestion. It actually does help us to form saliva, which actually begins the breakdown of a lot of our carbohydrates and a lot of nutrients um, in the digestion process. So we do need it for that. Um, it is needed for the brain um, to be manufactured hormones as well as neurotransmitters. Um, it helps regulate body temperature. So we all kind of know, right, when we're exercising and we sweat, um, it kind of sweats to help us cool down. So if we don't have proper amounts of water, we can't necessarily help regulate that. It does act as a shock absorber for our brain and spinal cord. Um, it does, again, convert food to components needed for digestion and survival. So again, that water is super duper important. It does help actually transport a lot of nutrients throughout our body to aid with that digestion and, and um, for survival and give us the nutrients we do need. It does help flush a lot of that body waste um, out of our body, mainly in urine. It does help deliver um, and help lubricate a lot of our joints, specifically too during exercise, but even in just activities of daily living, such as walking, et cetera. And it does help deliver oxygen to the entire body. So to kind of summarize all of these, water's main functions include temperature regulation, um, metabolism, acid base regulation, lubrication, and protection. So the balance um, of that kind of body fluids is definitely important to kind of help um, keep everything moving properly um, in, the, in the body. So how much kind of water um, do we need? So there is no one answer to this question of how much water is sufficient. It's actually um, very individualized. Um, again, uh, I always say this with everything as a dietitian, but it's um, very individualized with our calories and as well as our water about how much we need. Um, it's depending on our size, our body composition, activity level, 
as well as even the temperature and humidity of the environment because um, I'm not quite sure where all of you are located but even being in Ohio I know it can get pretty pretty humid um, so we do need again that water to help compensate um, all that humidity that we're in. So water intake comes from a combination of you know drinking water, um, beverages, and even the water in foods like I mentioned. Um, but approximately 81% of our daily water intake comes from the beverages um, and the remaining 19% from foods. So as I mentioned, you, if you look at me you now, Kayla and I don't drink any water, you are getting some from foods, um, but you should be getting a lot of it from your daily intake of um, beverages or, or your drinks as well. Um, common foods that do contain um, more water is typically a lot of your fruits and vegetables. Um, there, that's where you get a bulk of a lot of the water from your foods, um, grains and that types of foods do contain very, very little. Um, it's more of your kind of fresh whole foods, um, such as your fruits and vegetables. Um, so there is kind of an adequate intake that's kind of required and stated, um, but again, um, it's very individualized per person, but I did want to include this in this slide. So. Um, adequate intake, they say this is how much the, the typical average can, average American um, should need, but it's about 3.7 liters for men. So I'm talking about in ounces, um, that's about 125 ounces for men. And then for women, it's about 2.7 liters, which would be about 91 ounces. But again, this may be increased um, depending on, again, the size, body composition, um, humidity, temperature of the environment, et cetera. Okay, so general of thumb, um, that I like to use with actually all my clients to aim for is about half your body weight in ounces of water. So that's just kind of general what I like to use um, of what you should aim for there. Okay, so if you kind of aim for about half your body weight in ounces of water, you're typically kind of even hitting the adequate um, intake there. So um, I know I didn't necessarily include this in the slide, um, but I'm going to talk about dehydration in the next one. But I wanted to kind of talk about some common symptoms that we may experience if we don't um, drink enough water before I dive into specifically the dehydration. Um, but number one being kind of um, persistent bad breath. So actually lack of water, again, inhibits that saliva production. I mentioned that it is key for that. Um, and with that, it kind of causes bacteria to build up on the tongue, the teeth, um, gums. Um, and all of those things with that increase in bacteria can actually um, lead to that bad breath there. Um, another one is fatigue. So not drinking enough water can cause, again, that fluid, that fluid loss in the body. Um, and it can lead to a decrease in blood volume. Um, and with that, it can actually put excess pressure on the heart to deliver that oxygen and nutrients to our organs, um, as well as our muscles, which may cause low energy or fatigue. I also put two constipation on here. It does promote good digestion and regular bowel movements by keeping stool soft and moving, moving easily through the digestive tract. So just keep that in mind if you do have any of these kind of common symptoms. Um, sugar cravings. So dehydration actually interferes with the body's ability to reach um, into those or tap into those glucose stores for energy. So it actually can trigger certain cravings for foods that are high in sugar and carbs. So if you kind of experience um, hunger pains, um, especially just after eating, um, try drinking more water to kind of quench your thirst. So I actually use this with one of my clients um, even lately because they, with our program, we, we advocate a lot of um, water drinking. So again, I usually advocate half your body weight in ounces of water and typically after our program, um, some of my clients kind of lean back on their water and he always kind of mentioned that he had cravings late at night and he didn't have those before. Um, and I immediately asked about his water intake and that was actually one of the main, the main issues. We weren't getting enough water. So his body was craving some of those other things. And once the water intake was increased, um, those actually went away. So it's just kind of um, one of the first things I usually kind of recommend is just maybe aiming for water first and then seeing, those, seeing that that kind of helps. So as you can see, water is definitely important um, and lack of it can actually lead to um, dehydration. So low fluid intake actually increases our risk of kidney stones um, and also can increase our risk of um, urinary tract, breast or even colon cancers. 
Um, there are a few drinks that actually increase fluid excretion, and that's definitely caffeine um, as well as alcohol. Um, and if you are um, taking any diuretic medication, so Lasix um, specifically is the first one that comes to my mind. If you're taking any of those, it can actually, again, increase that fluid excretion, which increases your risk of dehydration if we're not properly re refueling and, and retaking our water in. Um, dehydration does, again, diminish our physical and mental performance. Um, those that are, are more vulnerable would be our infants and as well as the frail elderly. Um, typically, um, those are more at risk than the average American there. Early signs of dehydration, which include a lot of them that I just mentioned, but fatigue, dry mouth, headache, um, and even dark urine. So you actually can, again, use, use the urine to kind of help um, gauge how much water you're getting. So our change in urine color actually reflects our body's attempt to kind of conserve water by increasing water absorption. Um, in our kidney. So you might have noticed your urine becomes darker when you haven't had much to drink, whereas it can um, become almost colorless when we've had plenty of drinks. So you, get, you again, you can kind of use that as a gauge to see if you're getting enough um, water. Um, and water consumption is a primary treatment for dehydration. Um, if that does not properly um, fix it, um, IV fluids or intravenous fluids in hospitalization may be necessary um, for moderate to severe, severe dehydration there. So um, that's typically some of the common things of dehydration. So to summarize all this up, um, to summarize both alcohol and water, uh, just know that alcohol can have long-term effects on our body and it is best to consume alcohol in moderation. And again, limit to no more than one drink per day for women and two drinks per day for men. And again, if your goal is to improve your body composition, I usually kind of say limit it even more than that um, for, for optimal health there. Um, but water is essential for our body and its main function, again, includes temperature regulation, metabolism, acid base regulation, lubrication, and protection. So we are definitely, um, you need to get in a lot of your water. A lot of people, I think, typically ask me too about like crystal light um, and that kind of stuff. Um, typically, um, I'm not a huge advocate of that. I like to say aim for um, fresh fruits to kind of flavor your water. I know there's a lot of water bottles now that kind of do that. Um, you can just actually put like lemon um, water or um, strawberries I've done before, even cucumbers to kind of flavor your water versus always going towards, you know, a processed packaged um, flavor enhancer in a sense. Um, a general rule of thumb, again, to for water intake is about half your body weight um, in ounces of water, okay? So those are kind of the key points to both of these things. So it's kind of the opposite for both of these, but alcohol, right, our goal is to kind of definitely limit that and have moderation. And my goal for most people with water is to always increase water intake um, for um, optimal health as well. So again, if you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out. Um, most of you have my personal email, but that's Caitlin, K-A-I-T-L-Y-N, at anytimepickwa.com. So you can ask me or ask any of your club owners or club trainers, um, and we'll, we'll reach out to you with a, with a proper answer. So just let me know. Um, and as always, thank you for watching, and I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful day.